Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The members of the ruling coalition have been accused of abrogating their sacred duty that took them to parliament, both in the National Assembly and the Senate. The role of members of parliament are divided into three. We have representation where they are supposed to be representing the views and the feelings of the people who elected them to office because they don't find themselves in parliament. They are elected and their offices are managed by taxpayers' money. They have security, secretariat, and all these are maintained by taxpayers' money. And so before they do anything, they need to understand that whatever they are doing represents the views of the people who they represent. Then we have legislative part of their role. As members of parliament, both in the National Assembly and the Senate, their role is to make laws that govern, laws and policies that govern our country. And these policies must also look into the views of Kenyans, views of the people who represent them. So that before they do this, they really need to ask their constituents what exactly they feel. For example, if there is a bill that is supposed to be passed, then they need to understand exactly what their constituents would want to, or how those constituents would want them to vote. Then number three is oversight. The members of parliament, both in the Senate and the National Assembly, should scrutinize, for example, if in the budget allocation, if state house has been given more money unnecessarily, they are supposed to scrutinize and find out why that office is being given money and they interrogate what exactly this money is going to do. So that if it is too much, they have the powers to reduce it. It is their role. But all these three roles have been abrogated and the parliaments, parliamentarians, have become a puppet of the executive. They do exactly what the president wants. Edwin Sifuna recently cornered one of the legislators and, and, and he told, he was explaining to Kenyans that before the members of parliament come to the house, they need to take a bill, read, look at it very carefully. And then when they come to the floor of the house, they need to debate and reason and tell Kenyans why they are voting for or against a particular bill. This is Edwin Sifuna. You understand what I'm saying? So when I tell you that you did not consider the bill, you are showing it here that you actually did not consider the bill. And members of parliament are required to read and understand what they are passing. In my experience in the Senate, and I've said this, most members do not want to consider bills. Because consideration of bills does not happen during voting. It is a three-step process. First you consider, then debate, explain to the people why you are supporting a certain proposal or why you're not supporting a certain proposal. This is why your logic most of the time doesn't make sense. And when it is pointed out, so, so, you become so, hysterical. Where does the money, you become where, no, but where does the money, need, where does the money, be, where, where does the money to, to subsidize the farmer come from? Yeah. That is where does the government is, get money to subsidize a farmer from? That debate was really heated. In fact, uh, Honor Bukaguchia at some point lost his school when Sifuna was accusing him and the other members of the ruling class of uh, just voting for bills that have come to the floor of the house simply because they have been instructed by the president. They have been instructed by the majority leader both in the National Assembly and in the Senate. 
he insisted, Honorable Bukabuchi insisted that they read the bills. But when you look at what has transpired of late, in Central or Mount Kenya, when the Finance Bill 2023 was brought into the floor of the House, they debated and some members simply rushed to pass this bill. And it has been proved by themselves undertaking actions that corroborate Sifuna's what you now call allegations that they don't read the bills after passing the finance bill 2023. Later they realized that there were certain levies that had been in, in, imposed on farm producers like avocado that would be very unnecessary if you ask me to the farmers. And when the farmers realized late after this had been passed, they started yelling, quarreling and, and, and lamenting at some point. Some leaders, the very, very parliamentarians who voted yes overwhelmingly with a lot of enthusiasm in parliament, led the members uh, of their constituents in rejecting it, calling, you know, convening meetings and saying this is wrong. Now, what shocked me is the deputy president himself, Fidel Shagwa, was also in the mix saying that now he will talk to the president to see how they can withdraw that part of the bill. In fact, he, is, he even formed a task force looking into how the avocado farmers in Central rural are crying fall about this bill, how can, how can they can be helped. Now, when this debate was going on, some people accused Edwin Sifuna of being malicious. But Maragua member of parliament, Mary, and it was Mary Wamaua, shocked the nation when she revealed that actually they don't read the bills, neither do they consider the bills. They simply vote because they have been instructed by their bosses. Look at what Mary Wamaua is saying. That to those asking why Kenya Kwanza MPs passed the Finance Act without noticing and removing some proposed taxes such as the new avocado tax, the Finance Bill is a big document to know every nitty gritty. Ask pastors who have a Bible by their side every day. Really, there is a member of parliament who was elected, a person who takes huge salaries from taxpayers. The member, the, 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 the constituents of Maragua elected Mary Wamaua to go and scrutinize a bill before it comes to parliament, the way Sifuna was explaining there. And she's coming back after realizing that in that bill there was avocado levy that the farmers are now crying for. And she's got no apology. She's saying that that document is so big and so there was no need. They could not, not know uh, the every nitty gritty. And she's saying that even pastors do not know the whole Bible. This is like a medic telling you that medicine is a very huge field so that they cannot read and they end up giving wrong medication to a patient. Can you imagine if you go to a doctor and he or she tells you that the reason why I, do, I, I gave wrong diagnosis is because the, the, the field of medicine is so big and therefore bear with me, your person has died or has been affected in one way or the other, but bear with me, I'm a doctor but that field is just so big. This is unaccepted. She represents many who do not see the need of interrogating bills. Because when a bill comes to parliament, you need to read the bill and say, Mr. Speaker, I support this bill but with certain amendments. I remember Gadoli Mushomba during the, the debate on Finance Bill 2023 and the debate on housing levy. 
she scrutinized that bill, gave reasons why she was in, she was uh, opposing. At some point in the housing levy bill, she was pro proposing certain changes that she knew very well would benefit her people, but she was overruled by the numbers. The tyranny, the tyranny of numbers. Now they are coming back to ne ne negate what they voted for. When you form a task force to interrogate what you've already passed because you didn't interrogate, and the task force maybe is earning other money for them to sit the sitting allowance, you are continuing to waste taxpayers' money, and this is wrong. This member of parliament has just had, you know, earned herself a vote of no confidence, including those who voted like her. You know, sometimes back the members of parliament had complained to Mr. Ruto that some of these bills are making them unpopular, and Ruto told them, don't worry, you need to be popular only at the right time. They understand that this is making them unpopular. No wonder there was alleged memo that they should no longer debate with Edwin Sifuna because Edwin is giving them a lot of headache. When you don't read, when you don't have facts, when you are simply passing the bills because the president has said, you don't have facts, no wonder your points are little. And then you are disappointing, you are a disappointment to the constituents who voted you. And I'm not restricting this to the ruling class, even the members of the opposition, if they don't read the bills, if there is any member of parliament, either in the Senate or in the National Assembly, then you're a disappointment. You have no business being there. They are also being heckled because of such theatrics. You vote, then you come back condemning the very, very bills and acts of parliament that you yourself passed under the hazards, uh, hazards are showing that you voted. Then you now create a show. You're chasing the KRA officials. The KRA officials who went to Mount Kenya wouldn't have, wouldn't have been there if the parliamentarians did not pass the law, the, 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 the bills. And Kenya cannot progress if we have such members of parliament who, instead of you know, exercising their oversight, they are themselves being dictated by the executive. Instead of exercising their role of representation, they represent the executive instead of the people who elected them. Instead of uh, you know exercising their role given by the Kenyans, they don't do that. If they have to legislate and make laws, it will be there will be laws that you know only promote the views, the feelings, and the dictates of the executive. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very wrong. And those who think that maybe some members of opposition were being malicious, now Mary, the member of parliament in Maragua, has confirmed to you that they simply go there as puppets. Once the majority leaders have uh, presented the bills, then they pass them without any amendments. And I'm not condemning all of them. I have seen people like Boniface uh, Aluale stand on, on, on the floor of the Senate and saying, Mr. Speaker, I know we are on the side of the government, but this is wrong. And that is the role of a legislature, because they know that they were elected by members of parliament. This is unacceptable. This is very shameful and belittles the members of parliament. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.